First of all, congratulations. Beautiful yeah. show. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate um, it. Yeah, it's been um, uh, fun to think about it. We, we spoke earlier and kind of you, you gave me some good direction for thinking about how to, st to kick off the, the conversation. And, you know, I thought maybe we'd just start with a really big topic, which is Let's landscape painting in the age of climate crisis. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I know how important um, 19th century landscape painting has been for you and kind of thinking about um, your work and your approach to the sublime and all that landscape can express. Uh, but I was thinking about how um, for those artists in um, back in time, they were also dealing with profound change in their own environment with the Industrial right. Revolution and really what's maybe the start of where we're now heading today with yeah, with yeah. Um, with climate change and so I thought it would be interesting to talk a bit about how your work is reflecting this moment and um, uh, your thoughts on you know what it might be expressing about this, this age that we're heading into right. or that we are in and maybe we don't even recognize where we're at yeah, yeah. I mean, it is definitely a, it is a large, uh, it's sort of a large sub, you know, area to sort of pull from. Um, but yeah, in regards to those particular influences, I, I do, um, you know, I think about that also in the terms of, you know, sort of the creation of, you know, America today and this sort of manifest destiny and go west and, you know, these paintings that were um, just sort of these embellished ideals of, you know, this promised land that we should all move towards, you know, untouched by anyone and, you mm -hmm. know, just ripe for the taking. And I think of this, like, particular, this beer stot, um, I think it was a print, actually, or I could be, I could be confused, but it was of a stump mm. that it was, like, immensely large that like people were basically having like a big like dance on mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I, I think it was Bierstadt that had done this and, and these these little like communiques would come back from the west and sort of like everything's bigger here and there's so much for us to sort of take from and all that so mm -hmm. um, but you know I think that that yeah in regards to what I'm doing now like I've always sort of loved that idea of somebody just sort of like embellishing that idea in mm -hmm. a sense and um, and so I think I take some liberties too when it comes to um, you know where we are now with landscape where we're headed with landscape I mean I think that uh, you know we talked a little bit about sort of the future um, you know these have this sort of uh, the science fiction sort of feel to them and I think that you know, we've gotten to a, a stage where we're all sort of prognosticating about what is the future, what is, you know, a couple years from now, what is, you know, a couple hundred years from now. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, I'm sort of, I'm doing that in a sense. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I like that idea of sort of bookending it with mm. the, the beginning of that, of those romantic, Hudson River school painters and whatnot. But yeah, I've, I've been thinking a lot about the palette and um, right. like ideas of like, or just the experience of like a gasoline rainbow where you see yeah. like there's a chemical spill, but like there's this beautiful element to it. And so um, how this, this body of work might be reflecting a bit of a kind of this edginess of the sublime, like we're in an in a space where um, as our environment is changing and as we're seeing the effects of some of the, um, uh, you know, extraction or chemical right. spills or all of these things, but there's, um, uh, there's a weird, uh, I don't want to say beauty because that's not really what I'm saying, but there's right. like, it's a surprise, like. Yeah, I think in a sense that is sort of like, it is almost the sublime, like what we're experiencing, like, for example, uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, when we had the real heavy uh, wildfire smoke and suddenly my daughter was able to stare at the sun 
Mm. And, uh, you know, it, like that's a very profound moment where you're suddenly, in fact, a friend of hers had said, oh, look, the moon's out today. Mm. And it was like, no, that's not the moon, that's the sun. And they're like, oh, but you can't look at the sun. But mm -hmm. like suddenly we could look at the sun and of course it's this very particular red. And, you know, so I guess that there is something like profound about that. And mm -hmm. um, now, granted, like, you know, from an eight-year-old's perspective, it's one thing, but, you know, from our perspective, it comes with, accompanied with such weight and such, like, you know, horror, I'd say, mm -hmm, you know, but mm -hmm. it, and that's so why I think in a sense that is the sublime because it is just so overpowering. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, and I think that these paintings reflect that in a lot of ways. I mean, the, the, the whole title of the show, Watercolor, is sort of set to evoke the, you know, it's sort of like a, a crisscrossing of, you know, landscape art, painting specifically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also just sort of the land that we're living in. And, you know, now they're filled with water and that's because it's sort of like, you know, things are sort of melting away and, you know, we're seeing our watercolors sort of stream together and make these sort of, you know, initially, you know, with when yellow and purple combine, they know it's this beautiful moment but then eventually it all just sort of turns brown you know mm -hmm. so it's sort of like this this moment in time where we're like ex experiencing wow you know the wonder of it all but you know there's a sort of a foreboding I mm -hmm. think behind it all mm -hmm. yeah yeah I was curious about the title water color mm -hmm. and how water and color are definitely you know have been constant themes throughout right. your your work and so you know what was the impulse to really pull those out with this body of work right well I think that it was first of all it was, it was very much tongue-in-cheek because I just thought like oh Adam Sorensen watercolors it's like you expect <laughs> a bunch of watercolor paintings mm -hmm. and um, and but then it was also not obviously that because you look at that and it's like well why isn't it watercolors and why is it divided you know and so I was trying to sort of like break these themes apart and have a little bit of fun you know there's definitely a sense of humor with it all mm -hmm. too um, the the this painting right here uh, fallow mallow this greenish one with the the prismatic sort of glacial pictures there that was the one that was probably would have been titled Watercolor. It was certainly mm. the one that got mm -hmm. me to the show title. Mm -hmm. But rather than title, like sort of putting all of that on that one painting, it became like, oh, the title Watercolor then sort of, it freed me up to sort of have a little more fun with the other, this other trio of paintings. So like this one is Prussian Martian. The one at the, the opening of the, of the show is called Ochre Umber. <laughs> and they're all these sort of, um, you know, they're plays on words, they're, they're directly linked to the actual materials that mm -hmm. I'm using. Mm -hmm. So the ochres and the umbers together, like, were distinctive to that. This was Prussian blue and Mars brown, so it's Prussian Martian. That one was thallow green, and then just sort of like, like a marshmallow was what I was thinking, so it was like thallow mallow. Mm -hmm. So they're very playful in that sense too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that sort of ties into what we're talking about in a lot of sense, in a lot of ways too, because it's like, you know, it's, it's heavy. Like what, what we're all experiencing is heavy when it comes to our relationship to the land and, it, and now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's okay to just sort of be like, well, at least it's pretty, at least we can laugh about, you know, it's like there's sort of things that we have to sort of do as humans to continue being human. Mm -hmm. with all yeah, that, right? we were speaking about just a sense of joy or a sense of hope uh, right. and that might also come across in that that humor or kind of calling out, uh, right. uh, you know, a little bit of the wordplay and um, that um, uh, can take us beyond maybe a kind of sense of despair right I mean I don't see any despair really in right, these works right. yeah. <laughs> so, which also is interesting because I know that it's sort of like underneath that this kind of almost a sense of like a syntheticness to the to the landscape right. that um, you know has that double edge to right. it I find well and I think that that sort of relates to what I was saying earlier about that Bierstadt uh, print 
<laughs> now it's like now I'm like I'm not even sure if it was him that made the print, <laughs> but you know just sort of the the very obvious like people dance like having a dance on a stump you know has just like all these connotations mm -hmm. and now that we look back on it and it's like like that's not joyful that's like it's just gross it's, there's like something mm -hmm. about it is just mm -hmm. so ghoulish you know mm -hmm. and I feel like you know. Like maybe there's a time where somebody could look back at this and be like, "Oh, but you think green skies are hilarious? Like, mm -hmm. like this is what we live. You know what I mean? Like, there's sort mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. that to it. But, but I think that in a sense, like, like color, and you know, color, which has always been so important in my work. Mm -hmm. You know, from the beginning, it's what made me want to paint mm -hmm. to begin with. Is also the evidence." in a sense, of the human, of the humanity mm -hmm. within these paintings, because mm -hmm. there aren't any, there's no figures, there are no figures in it, so, you know, I'm trying to express maybe our effects, or mm. just, mm -hmm. you know, both, like, allegorically, and also just, you know, like, I'm painting an empty, you can't paint an empty thing from the future, mm -hmm. and not, you know, be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I find that so um, fascinating about the work too, is that no figures, there's like, how do you as a viewer enter into the space? Like, is there a space for you there within these landscapes or right. are we completely displaced from it as viewers? Right. And um, uh, I was gonna transition a little bit to the, the painting just around the corner called mm. Dusk, which mm -hmm. I, um, there's a really different sense of space within that painting, right. which helps me as a viewer situate myself with that landscape, where I don't have a have a kind of a place to stand in some mm. of these other works. So, right. um, and when we were speaking about that work, you said it was a little bit of a transitional piece for you. So, I wonder if we could hear a little bit about your thinking on that. Yeah, yeah, that piece was. Well, I think that that piece had, well, it had time. It had time in a way that these other ones didn't. And, well, maybe I should rephrase that. Like, it just sort of, <laughs> it was started a long time ago. It was sort of visited by me over time in various, like, iterations, and it would be hidden away. Whereas these were just like, like I sort of knew what was going to happen, and I executed. Like mm -hmm. these were much more just like uh, mm -hmm. straight as an arrow. Um, but that one was one that uh, you know originally was you know it was a vertical piece, and then I flipped it over, and I started this whole other thing, and then I had this you know I sketched out a, a whole thing that I, I was pretty intent on keeping but then I couldn't really ever like put the meat on the bones in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and so there are a lot of like viewpoints through there's a lot of transparency there's a like you know there's this sort of like hastily and I don't want to say hastily or gesturally um, mm -hmm. uh, modeled like sort of mushroom slash abstraction you know but mm -hmm. modeled abstraction in front and so mm -hmm. so there's this depth and there's the space to it that really could only happen because I had so many different mindsets mm. and like how mm -hmm. I was doing that work. And that's, that's happened before mm -hmm. with works of mine, um, but it's hard. It's really hard to achieve because it really takes, takes enormous, enormous patience and persistence because there are, I mean, there are probably hundreds of paintings in my studio that I just, you know, will never finish. Mm -hmm. and Maybe a couple will eke out and resolve themselves, but um, the ones that do, like they have, they hold sort of a special place, I think, because of that. Mm -hmm. So, so they probably also hold a, like literally a place, you know, yeah. or something that can be. Well, I was just thinking; it just occurred to me too that um, maybe what I'm picking up on is the presence of the mushroom. Okay. And you know, I know you've. Used, you've had a motif of mushrooms in other work, but I don't see it in these water-focused right. paintings. And so that, um, that kind of being that is the mushroom that's in the piece is, right. I don't know, maybe that's just affecting my reading of it because I can kind of uh, maybe 
relate to it in some way, yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah. So, uh -huh. um, whereas, you know, taking more of like a maybe area, like it's hard, it's hard for me to even describe am I like a, having a bird's eye view in some or a fish eye view in others in these works. So right. I find that um, anyhow really an interesting kind of dynamic in the yeah. exhibition. Well, and I think that that one in particular around the corner is very much like foreground, midground, mm -hmm. uh, background, mm -hmm. or in reverse. Um, whereas these, you know, they have that, but they also have just like, like they just sort of, they twist, the perspective twists throughout mm -hmm. because there mm -hmm. is no, like I'm not adhering to, you know, three point perspective mm -hmm. or, you mm -hmm. know, I'm just sort of feeling it out. And I think that that's also, I've, I've always embraced that because mm -hmm. there is, <laughs> there's a clumsiness that happens with the, with, mm. you know, with the paintings. And I think that that's, you know, that's the humanity again. And it's mm -hmm. also like mm -hmm. not, it's also the inhumanity too. Mm. You know, it's sort of like, I think about, um, you know, I think about like, uh, of course, I'm gonna forget. But I think about the idea of being able to see more colors on the prism than we can actually yeah, see. Yeah. Okay. So like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, ultraviolets or your mm -hmm. infrareds or whatever. Like what? Like you know, to us it's just sort of a concept. You mm -hmm. know, to like a few like special people on the planet who can actually see a little bit more like within mm -hmm. the prism. You know, so I think of it in the sense of like. Well, maybe it's uh, you know just sort of like a perspective we don't understand, or mm -hmm. like you know, mm -hmm. like even like you know, because the way we view things is very mm -hmm. human. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. So maybe just like in that these are like science fiction subjects, or also maybe sort of like science fiction in their um, observation as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and certain species can see right, colors yeah. in different ways, and so yeah, yeah. so it's a dip, like displacing that human, right? Human. But these are also like these are way. also uh, absent of any sort of you know flora or fauna, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and that's been something I've. I've been very conscious of for a while of just mm. sort of like just rocks and water and sky, you know, just sort of like, and I think of that as like kind of, I think it's eerie. I think that mm -hmm. there's something about that that's mm -hmm. eerie because, you know, desertification, whatever. Mm -hmm. But whereas like when you put the mushrooms and then these other forms in it, then you inherently are sort of like evoking life again. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, that painting, Dusk, you know, a lot of people have said to me, like, like, ooh, like it's so, it's dark and like, yeah. it's like you know, it's like, is that your goth <laughs> painting or whatever? You know, I've like heard sort of like things, mm -hmm. but I think of it just more. It's like it's called dusk for the reason of sort of like, you know, coming out of it. So it is sort of like it's more of a hopeful thing mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, and mm -hmm. maybe it's because, yeah, just sort of the life that is still persevering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, some of the works on paper, too, have um, a little bit of the, that same kind of mm. maybe gestural quality or um, what we were, how did you just describe it a few minutes ago, a kind of like... Um, uh, I don't know, rewind tape? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, I've been, really been enjoying looking at those and kind of seeing... Um, I, I refer to it as a bit of immediacy, like I felt like there was, I could see the mark that you made, whereas mm -hmm. some of the other works are, have a kind of finished, very finished right. quality to it. And um, so you shared that you have many of these works on paper in your studio mm -hmm. and um, uh, how you live with them over time too, like you'll kind of bring it back out and, and work on it again. And right. um, love to just hear more about that process. Yeah. and what it kind of does for you as, right. you, as you work towards this, this work. Right, well I think that, um, yeah, I mean I just, I always have primed paper, like, you, you know, it's either just on hand or it's like I'm making it, like getting, preparing it for just sort of these instances where I have, you know, a different idea that I just need to get out or, uh, a, 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 a surplus of a particular color that I really want on the palette that I want to just sort of spread out. Mm -hmm. And so there is sort of a more, 
yeah, a lax attitude towards them. And like, so I get real gestural at times and just sort of mark making and put them away. And um, I mean, I will like, I mean, I put them really far, like I'll stack them and put them mm -hmm. in boxes <laughs> and just throw them and then like pull them out like little time capsules or Christmas presents or you know, whatever, <laughs> like just to sort of uh, Christmas presents that always disappoint. Because <laughs> <laughs> I always have to put more stuff in yeah. it's not finished. Um, so there are a lot of those that, that do that and then there are those sort of magical moments that I think where it like just catches fire or it just, you know, takes off and I, and I, and the ones that I included in this exhibition were all the ones that were sort of like, oh, just, they're finished. Like, mm -hmm. and I, I remember I have these big tables in my studio and I would just, you know, pull out the box and like throw them out onto the thing over again, rearrange them, look at them a million times and then just inherently these ones would just stand out. Mm -hmm. and, um, aside from a couple of, you know, little tiny things that needed to happen. And I think I was expressing to you how the one painting over there has these blue, like stem-like forms in the foreground and I literally just like I had extra blue and I was just like, I like this painting. It's not quite there. And I just was like, ja, 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 ja. <laughs> and you know, it was like one of these things that I find so, it's just like so cliche painter. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I always am like, oh brother, like roll my eyes as I'm doing it, but then doing it at the same time. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, no, all I needed to do was this perfect Prussian blue just needed to be, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, those are, those are, um, yeah, those are that for me. Yeah. They're something a little less intense. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. I can see it as kind of like a, a release valve in some ways yeah, when you're so. working in such a concentrated manner on other pieces. Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of, I have a lot of things in my process, in my studio process that are basically about me just continuing to move, mm -hmm. even if I'm not like, you know, pushing paint on the paintings that I want to finish. It's like just keeping me going. And mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't settle well. Like wh when I say settle, I mean like I don't sit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't, I don't stand still in my studio very much. I'm very much just like I walk around and I'm like moving things around and then I'm, but I'm constantly painting and Mm -hmm. um, and those give me just that sort of like little like outside the margins mm -hmm. and chance. And, mm -hmm. so, and so a lot of the, those things in the those will live in a box for years probably. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think what you were just describing about needing to kind of keep moving mm -hmm. and um, is a good segue to the other works in the four yeah. in the front room uh, that you worked on during the pandemic uh, yeah. that uh, are um, are in the same kind of visual language, but I, they strike me as very different to the landscape paintings. Right, well those were, um, I did those, I started those during lockdown, and I feel like I had, I mean we all had, we all experienced lockdown, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I, I had this moment where I had, I had done, the last show I had done was right before Corona virus mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. swept through and we all had to go indoors. And so I had this sort of moment in time where I was sort of finished, but I needed to do something, but I had this sort of excuse to do something else. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I just returned to a, a moment in my, I, in my life where I wasn't doing landscape paintings. I sort of brought myself to that sort of mindset and started with a grid and um, just, started working things out and before I knew it I had like a, a several step process to like get to these sort of geometric spatial paintings and mm -hmm. and once I and I would spend I mean they're just so engaging making them were so engaging mm. um, because they were I mean just using rulers and connecting dots and like this one then you know one step pushing me to the next step like so like the thought was all at the beginning and then mm -hmm. afterwards like it just sort of like, like I could really just sort of get my flow mm -hmm. with those and mm -hmm. and so then once they were sort of lined up I could just be like okay pink you know and just yeah. put pink down and then 
you know, even just the application of color on those mm -hmm. was just me following like guidelines in a sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they were really just this way to keep it moving. They were kind of my little, I think I, t I don't know if I mentioned it, but they're all metric. They're all. Oh, no, you didn't mention that. So that, that was like my little <laughs> protest because <laughs> I just find, like, I, I had done this job, years ago I had done this job for a friend of mine in Prague and I was worked for him for four months and so we were doing everything in metric and it mm -hmm. was like the most <laughs> eye-opening experience ever because it's just so easy. The yeah. system is easy, especially yeah. when everything is in that system. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just one to 10 and keep going. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, it, this is 2020. I think we we're all pretty pessimistic at this time. And I was like, you know what? Enough with this stupid American system. I'm gonna do these in metric and I mean, now granted, like you look at the, the, they're labeled in whatever it's called, American. I don't even know what it's called. Um, oh, the imperial system. Imperial system, yes, that's what it is, the imperial <laughs> so. system. So they're sized in imperial, but they are actually 50 by 40. And so, and they're all, it's all a two millimeter grid. That's mm -hmm. what they all start out at. So they all have these like things that they start out as and mm -hmm. then they just sort of, you know, chaos sort of ensues and, mm -hmm. and then I started to like break them off of the grid a little bit, but um, yeah, they've just given me this little, just a different sort of direction. Yeah, and will you, you know? continue to use, well, use I have, that kind of system? I, or, or, I think yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, every, you know, every show, every time, you know, we have the, we, are able to exhibit our work, I think we, all of us. Um, it's sort of like a chance to start anew, I think, mm -hmm. and sort of, you know, pick up. And I think that me, ex like, being able to exhibit those mm -hmm. is sort of helpful for me to be like, okay, I'm imbuing a little bit more into that. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see, I don't know, I'm, I'm also changing, I'm moving out of my studio, I'm, I'm building the studio in my garage, so I'm like, there's this okay. like a whole new like rebirth happening, and mm. so I'm mm -hmm. hoping, ho hoping that after all that, there will be some new paintings as well, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. maybe, you know, are able to pull from all those sort of lines of thought. Yeah, great. Yeah. I'd love to hear how folks are responding to the work, and uh, es maybe especially those newer paintings in the in the front. And um, does anyone oh, yeah. want to? So I was going to oh. share one more thing. Okay. Excuse me. One more thing about those paintings is that they're all my other, you know, to sort of bring it back to what these are titled. Those are all titled um, essentially ancient cities that have all gone extinct. Oh, okay. So it's sort of this yeah. like, you know, they're all eventually about. To, it was. For me, they were all about like build, 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 production, 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 but they're all titled after things which inherently just entropy got to and mm -hmm. took mm -hmm. away. So mm -hmm. they don't, there are places that don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm. that kind of fits into the theme of everything. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Anyone want to? I'm just staying on the subject of those paintings. Um, did uh, did you was it much different from you for you not having the system of the landscape or even though these aren't perspective, you still are doing things that are spatial with the color and you've got wild but kind of limited palettes in many of them. So with those geometrics, did you? Did you find a way to systematize it, or did you just like you know, go wild, or how, how was the color change for you? <laughs> I mean, I do think that I did, I, I did systematize it. Like, I think that, I think it's just my nature to sort of do that, to just, to sort of organize it all in, you know, so what makes sense, I guess, visually for me. Mm. So, um, there are ones at the beginning that I think were much more like me sort of figuring out the paths I was gonna take with it. And then when I sort of like blocked it all out, then I just sort of followed that path again, just hoping to see the, like, the subtle sort of shifts that happened. Um, but 
There are so, I mean, they relate so much to these paintings too. Like if they're just inherently, yeah, like we, the palette, like I feel like the palette is, they're so similar, yeah, because as you say, it's like they're, it, they're all encompassing, but they're also very specific. Like I use very specific, like I use one yellow, I use, you know, like there are very specific um, colors that I use in general, and those just in the same, like I, I'm working from the same um, toolbox in that sense. Mm -hmm. And even just the finish of paint, like I, I have like a, I use this wax medium and this gel medium and this, and these very specific proportions. And so, so that was also a part of it. They're also on linen, like there's, like all the finish aspects are the same as the landscape. It was mostly just me not making a landscape or at least not making these landscapes. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. they also have, you know, we talked about the odd perspective and the sh perspective shifts and those are, that is blatantly on view with those because we have these valleys and hips that, you know, don't really make, I mean, they make sense, but they don't make sense, like the way light actually works. But. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you crack the code, they're pretty much the same. <laughs> How has uh, becoming a father changed your outlook? Oh, man, so many ways. <laughs> well, I, it definitely got me to figure out that like working in the morning is the only time to really work. You know? um, but I don't know, you know, I, I feel like you know, I feel like we've begun this whole conversation talking about some of the heaviest stuff. <laughs> you know, talking about climate change, talking about the future, talking about uncertainties. And I think that that's something that we are all just like bombarded with. And, you know, I, I remember when we were deciding whether we were going to have, have a kiddo, uh, that was my big thing, like, well, but, like, come on, what do we got, like, 20 more years, 20, 30 more years, you know? But I also think that, like, I mean, I don't think about that stuff when I'm around her, you know, just, like, inherently, I think that just being engaged with her and seeing her life and her, you know, the way she just moves through the world, like, you know, that makes, that gives, like, the hope side of things. I mean, gosh, I am so I'm sounding so. <laughs> I can't wait to play this one back. Um, but I think that it, it's just like inherently like, it's like, oh yeah, we got a problem. Oh yeah, we also have like beauty and we have humanity and we have all these sort of things. So, so I don't know. I think that probably it balanced me out a little bit. You know, that I had this show here probably about, oh, I don't know, it was like 2011 or so. It was a while ago. It was like, yeah. Um, and it was called The Optimist, mm -hmm. and it was very much just like tongue-in-cheek, like, like, adios, amigos, like, <laughs> we're, you know, and now I, I don't, you know, it's not tongue-in-cheek anymore. It's like I, I sort of, I feel much more optimistic, so. Yeah, we were talking a little bit about irony mm. yesterday, too, about, you know, that coming up as you know right coming of age at a time when things were very you know just irony was sort of all around us <laughs> and now Absolutely. it's you know, kind of it's not it's that's not our um kind of mindset anymore right. you know like right. there's um so i think having a child means you're an optimist because yeah you have a hope for the future <laughs> so, right. and um you know it's just kind of thinking about how it might relate to, to these works too, how there's, you know, kind of um, that balancing of the um, kind of beauty and optimism with, you know, what is um, the, what's like the forces the pushing it mm. in, in that direction, you know? So anyhow, just a, yeah, no, a I, random observation. But. Yeah, it's that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was the whole impetus for these landscape paintings at the beginning, was, mm -hmm. was irony. Like, that was a big part of it. It was like a 25-year-old who was just like, 
yeah, psychedelic landscape. That's funny. You know, like I just sort of had that like thought in a lot of ways. And the thing was, is that as I really dove in, I just was like, it's, this isn't funny. This, I mean, it is, but it's also like this and it's also that. And, it, you know, it's like, I mean, when you start to like, <laughs> when you assign your life to something like that, mm-hmm. like you inherently like find the sincerity, I think, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in there. So, but there's still some irony to it all. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Daniel. Um, so, one of the things that strikes me when I'm looking at these is about how, uh, I mean, they're, per- that they're quite desolate landscapes, but they're also quite lush, but also there's a lot of water. And as we're looking at it, where people are talking about like colonizing Mars, one of their things, the things they look for is one of the building blocks of life is water. And all of these have very prominently have water, but only one of them has life forms of any kind. Right. And that's, you mentioned that was a conscious decision. I think it's a really precise conscious decision. I'd love to just hear a little more about that. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think that that's... Well, I... Uh, so it's sort of like all about pinpointing... You know, if I'm going to imagine the future, if I'm going to imagine a future that is you know, let's say dark in a lot of ways. Like, I sort of feel like I'm pinpointing a moment in time where it's just the water is just like, like you're just sort of saturated by it. You know, it's like dryness, like is such a thing out here in particular. Like, I mean, here we are, you know, when is it going to rain again in Portland, Oregon, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it's something I feel like is almost like a worse uh, fate yeah yeah exactly yeah well that's the thing is it's like suddenly it's just like too much it's like the hose is just on now all of a sudden um Mm -hmm. but uh but I I do find that really fascinating what you say it's sort of like because they are you know they also have this sort of utopia vibe to them and I think that that's like that's in the zeitgeist I mean certainly you know I feel like there's a certain part of the world that's like yeah let's go to Mars or like let's build our compound in New Zealand or like let's s- escape from everything and like you know we'll just block it off and like we'll have our little utopia there and like I think we all know how that sort of story goes you know so um, I don't know I mean <laughs> these are definitely without uh, that sort of obvious life, the mushrooms and all that sort of thing. But I, I, uh, I don't necessarily think that they're like lifeless in that sense. Like there's still sort of this like moment of like, well, maybe it's like, you know, the vista. It's like maybe the like sort of unimpeded vista or maybe it's, you know, you know, Niagara Falls, the first time it was ever seen by humans. I don't know. Yeah. Well, just sort of going back to some of those 19th century landscape paintings where there were very few human forms. I, right. I'm not an expert in this area, but right, I'm right. picturing some in my mind right now that are all about that kind of majestic view. That's the kind of the sublime, awe-inspiring to make us feel diminished as, right. as humans. And so maybe that's something that is also at play here as you know, our landscape becomes inundated or, you know, it, it may have these different um, kind of hues to it, but right, it's... Right. Uh, you know, or you know what I think about? I think about uh, Yosemite Valley and like the mm-hmm. inundation. Like, like if you think about it, you think of that sort of picture of the valley where it's just the waterfall and like, you know, El Capitan and like, and it's desolate. Mm-hmm. And then, but of course, like Yosemite is just like, like you can't, get around without people there you mm-hmm. know? but so it's sort of this like almost like the staged sort of emptiness mm-hmm. in a sense which I mean I would consider these and that so, so if you were to put a human a scale mm-hmm. human in, in one of these landscapes how big would it be? oh man I <laughs> <laughs> uh, think about landscape painting Right. The history of landscape painting, you know, 
systems, but all, all of that. There's usually there is like usually a, thing. a person there. There's yeah. usually a thing that gives us That's a relationship the scale. Uh -huh. between the landscape and the right. Human. Yeah, no, I, I uh, so that that seems not part of what you're interested in. <laughs> no, not necessarily. I mean, and I mean, I am interested in that and sort of in the history of it and like like I think of uh, the um, the Hiroshiga prints of the oh, of course I'm forgetting but essentially the march of the the day the daily march of the um, it was like from Edo to or actually the other way around essentially I can't remember I'm, rem I'm forgetting everything in this moment. <laughs> but it was the, the march of the group that, that was essentially going to Edo so that the emperor could take control. And every single one of them, it's like these land, these crazy, beautiful landscapes and then just sort of this like shuffling of people that happen throughout it. And like sometimes they're really big and sometimes they're just like little marks, like going through valleys or like sort of like streaming through valleys. And, and so I guess that's my, I mean, if I were to put a human in there, I mean, I guess it would be that. I mean, like sort of any scale would kind of work. But, but I don't mm. really think of it. I mean, I, mm. in a lot of ways, like I used to think of it in the sense of, uh, what's his name, Casper uh, David Friedrich. You know, he's, a, he's a German painter of 19th century and he, you know, very quintessential romantic and just the sort of had like a very um, sort of Christian outlook on it and these you know the very famous one of the of the man sort of staring down the landscape like above these like clouds and stuff like that and so I've sort of like always thought of that as a template as well so almost like like a human could just sort of fit in the scale of it um, so mm -hmm. yeah yeah, referencing those types of paintings that, or even the dancing on a stump, right. like our domain, our sort of like dominion over nature, which right. isn't existing in these works by like erasing that human presence. Completely. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. At least the obvious. Yeah. 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 I have a small opinion from yours from my memory shot, but I'll say ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, you would call it a landscape <clears throat> and water. And then these outlines of what you would call rocks, but they're flattened with horizontal lines. Mm. So there's yes. a geometry and they're kind of graded in color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those like, like striated sort of. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I've always related to those parts as some type of sentient intelligence. Mm -hmm. So when we're all this talk about people and life and all, there's, it's a wider way one can go with this. I have no idea about what you're thinking. And so this isn't a comment about you know what you, you should have to do with her. I'm not asking you to even tell me necessarily, but when I, I've been looking at you folks up in the painting behind you all this time, and up in the upper left and in the lower right, See these shapes that yes, you could call them landscape, mm -hmm. but you could call them a community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they might be bare, they might be uh, poisoned, but they also might be uh, glowing with energy and some type of intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so that's my life in these paintings. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I can say is that I see some kind of I don't know intelligence. That's probably a very limited word here. But what it made me think of it too when you talk about the mushrooms mm -hmm. and their place in us trying to categorize the world and how we're finding out that they're really quite something separate mm -hmm. from their at the right. same time. So anyway, I just well, yeah, I think that that's also sort of the what we were talking about earlier about just sort of the humanity that's sort of been viewed into it in the sense it's like I mean I've yeah I mean those rocks over there are just sort of like pulsating and glowing and like. Mm -hmm. um, those especially get me to think about it because yeah. they're so special looking within the more traditional landscape, we call it. They just look so special. Right, right. Like they have to be maybe the next uh, dot, uh, 
on the light that thinks they're yeah. dominant. Right, right. right. Say rock exactly. Rock mm-hmm. Yeah, right. The right. next thing to crawl they out of the box. They could do something else that is going to think that they're the top of the food chain or the top of the chain. Right, they're the ones with the, with the next good ideas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that, um, your comments, because it's, you know, we are thinking about landscape painting as it's centered around the human perspective Mm -hmm. and maybe part of us moving into a new age is to see the the life form or the energy in all of these other beings. It's easy for me to actually understand the earth's Mm -hmm. gone and there will be life. It just may not be human. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So decentering our human perspective we can only see things from our human perspective because we're humans, but that there's that sense of what can be maybe post-human if we, you know, embrace different uh, understandings of what consciousness can be and what life forms are. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm always struck by the color choices of those mountains, and I always kind of associate them with sounds, if there's resonance. Mm-hmm. And then looking at the waterfalls, how they move, you can kind of hear them. So I get this very auditory type of experience when looking. Are you ever, are you aware of that type of environment? Are you thinking about sound? When you said you were 25, wanted to make psychedelic paintings, were you influenced by music, anything mm-hmm. like that? Because I definitely, you know, you can feel the steam rising, and, those rainbows being formed and right. You know, I was actually I was thinking about this similar to that uh, the other day. I, I was talking at PNCA and I found myself referencing all these moments in my career where I was like, oh well, and this was uh, this I did this for a band and I did this for a band or and also this band and I remember this band. You know, I was like, and I was thinking about just because like that moment in time for me, like. I was 25, I was in Portland, there was like a real just like swell of that kind of creativity. And uh, yeah, I mean, rock music was just, I mean, <laughs> God, I just sound so old when I say these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. David Bowie would really get these things. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Right, right I, would, I would hope so. I mean, well, so yeah. I don't know, I just think that that was sort of the, that was in a lot of ways like, what I came out of, like the sort of the zeitgeist that I came out of. And um, I do like that you're sort of hearing (laughs) them or whatever. I mean, because there is something so like, yeah. I mean, it's just sort of Mm -hmm. that white noise is, yeah. I mean, especially these ones, which are just inherently just like white noise. I mean, that's just Mm. visualization of that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I mean, and I think that that also comes back to the sort of the irony thing we were talking about, because in a lot of ways I was like, I was thinking a lot about like prog rock album art from the 70s and like mm-hmm. not that I was like I loved Yes or I loved these bands or anything but just sort of like oh that's kind of funny like it just at the moment in my life it was like that was like a way in to sort of like explore it it's just that that it just is all wrapped up in it now you know mm-hmm. sort of along mm-hmm. for the ride mm-hmm. so yeah Yeah, maybe that's a yeah, great way to end it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.